Right, one of the things that fills people with dread if they're new to motorhoming is emptying the toilet. Here we go. Unlock it. A bit tricky to open these. So you have to have two, two hands available. Push both, both buttons in and it comes open. Right, so the toilet is held in with this clip here. What you do is you push it up and just sort of grab hold of it. This is a little bit stiff there, but it does come out. It's a relief. Which is a relief. Because I think everything's a bit sort of stiff on the van. Yeah. So what you've got with this, got some wheels. You've got a handle which pulls out and you can roll it along. But it doesn't roll very well on the gravel. No. Suggest putting that up. Just close that for now. There we go. Okay. here. What you've got to be careful of is you don't lose the cap. And they've helpfully provided a place to put your cap. What you do is turn the spout round and then, if you can see that, there's a button here. Put your finger on that button, turn it upside down and there's a blue cap. can do is take this lid off which is also a little bit stiff just put that somewhere just put it on the floor turn that so it's open okay rinse the water the way just fill this up Right, leave that run in, and you don't need to press the button now because obviously you've got a big hole in there. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know what that was. That's it. Maybe on the film. Yeah. And what you then do. Give it a, little, a bit more of a rinse than normally get a couple of rinses, just switch it around a little bit. No, I've just scratched some of the in there that shouldn't have been in there. Then just top it up with a little bit of water and you just zoom in on that. I just normally top it up until I can put about half an inch or so in there. That's probably enough. Close it. Put your cap back on. Turn your thing around. Try not to drop that. <laughs> Fortunately that doesn't go down the hole. So put your lid on here and then we'll take it back to the back. Right, something one of our subscribers just pointed out, just reading the messages, is that the carbon monoxide sensor has still got its orange tab on there, which means it's not been activated. And I also noticed when I looked at it is that the smoke alarm has not got the battery plugged in. So that's something you really should check before you get a new motorhome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. No. Okay, so that's basically it. And then you've got to put it back on. So as you could check it. Beeps. Beeps. And that's just sort of that one's not in yet. That's it, they're both in. Gotta wait for that click. Yep. 
this thing, that's it, that just pulls off. Right. It's not got the battery connected. So. We'll figure out how to get the plastic seal off the battery. Stand by for a loud noise. No, nope, nothing. I test it. He said. Oh. Yeah, that's working. Right. That's it. So thank you, Robert. Um, one of our subscribers he just pointed out about the smoke alarm and the uh, carbon monoxide sensor uh, might save our lives I don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just something I think with all the packing and everything we didn't bother to to look at no, no. but yeah definitely something you can see you should look at you can see the smoke the fire one flashing on. yeah morning it's Sunday and we're off to Burr's Country Park now, something I've been wanting to do, and it reminded me of a comment I had on one of the videos yesterday, was uh, for people who are new to motorhomes, what are motorhomes like to drive? Okay, so just a little bit about the seating position. Um, if yeah, seat is really comfortable, um, obviously you need to get it adjusted for your height. These motorhome seats tend to have swivels, swivels on them, and what it does is it raises the seat a bit higher. So if you're fairly tall like me, what you do end up doing is you end up looking sort of the top of the windscreen. This is not too bad actually. Um, uh, you do get this bit in here. So you are looking sort of down on things. So you you do feel like you're up in the air if you drive if when you've been in the in the car in our little up and you've been in the car it you get in here and you feel like you're you're on stilts so that takes a little bit of getting used to the controls are pretty familiar you're not you're not going to struggle with the, you know you've got the cruise control stalk there you've got the indicator and lights the other side you've got the windscreen wash and wipers nothing really sort of complicated there what's different i suppose from a car is you've got the gear lever on a on a stalk and it's quite close to the steering wheel so you don't have to go too far to reach it and that is really useful sometimes um, and I think that's probably you know for long distance driving if you're doing a lot of gear changing that helps now next thing is obviously driving it clutch clutch is probably it's probably a little heavier than what you're used to with a car this is a, a new van, so you might find that a little bit heavier than you used to. Likewise, the gear, the gear lever, it's not, it's not sports car, you know, and, you, and particularly on a new van again, you might find that quite, quite stiff. But it, it's it's okay once you're on the move. So first thing, I'm in reverse. I haven't got a reversing camera on this van, so I do have to use the big mirrors quite a lot. But the thing about the mirrors is they are very clear and big and you've got a blind spot indicator on it as well so that helps so handbrake is on the right hand side in this van on on most peugeot boxers fiat ducatos you'll find the handbrake on the on the right hand side that takes a bit of getting used to mm. so let the handbrake off up with the clutch someone walking behind me i can see them and as you're going round, I'm sort of, I'm looking all the time, I'm going quite slowly because you can't see directly behind you, but you can see at the side. So I'm just taking it quite slowly. And I'm on full lock there, so it's easy to get out. It's a long, it's a longish van. I would say it's a medium wheel base van, this is. So it's fairly long. It's just something falling on my head. Put that up back up there. Sight speed is five miles an hour, so no need to rush. The steering on this is very light. If you again, if you're used to a car steering, you won't find this particularly difficult. 
it's it's nicely I watch the word nicely weighted do my top gear bit and uh, the faster you go the lighter it gets right so we're just leaving Southport and we're on our way to birds so this this is an automatic barrier and it's got a little box at the side of the, the barrier where you can dump your key I'm going to get reasonably close I tend to use the wing mirrors on the motorhome, a bit like cat's whiskers. Uh, if you can get the wing mirrors through, you can get the rest of the van. You haven't really noticed any issues yet with it being a little bit wider than you used to, have you? No. It's eight, eight foot two wide. The yeah. baileys tend to be a bit wider than most other motorhomes. And uh, I'm not, I can't say that I found it an issue. Like no. I say, if you can get the wing mirrors through, the gap, you know you can get the rest of the motorhome through. And that's basically it. I don't think the wing mirrors are any wider than any other motorhome, so... No. No, because they're part of the cab, aren't they? Yeah. Right, the gears, the gear, gears on this are is six speed. And uh, sort of round town, I suppose you're only really using one to four most of the time much as you would do in a car. First gear is quite um, quite short, you don't use it very often, it's it's quite low geared. Which way are you going? I'm going M65. Right, we're going towards Preston. Yeah, we're going yeah. towards Preston. Go over the top through the hills, see how it performs on the hills. Yeah. This is, this, what, is <laughs> this is one of the most notorious roads in Southport. This is the coast road. Yeah. And it's, it's ever so bumpy. Yeah. I feel like you're going up and down on springs, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, you are going up and down on springs. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we'd give the Baileys springs a little workout. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's not too that's bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. There is a worse bit coming up, I think, after these traffic lights. Oh, is it? <laughs> I, mean, I suppose you've got the advantage here. You've got all brand new shockers and everything, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not crashing, it's not no, bottoming no. out or anything. No, no, no. One of the things this van's got is cru it's cruise control. And you can see on the dashboard, that it it's, tells you that the cruise control is set at 50 miles an hour. It's 50 miles an hour along here, obviously, and uh, it works really well. And I I like the fact that this cruise control actually tells you cruise control's on. The Fiat one doesn't seem to do that. If I switch it off now, you can tell it's off, and it, but it still tells you what speed it would be set at. If you see what I mean. So I switch the the switch on again. switch the switch on again it goes back up to 50 which is excellent I like that so how many miles per gallon are we doing going along here we're well, just flicking through the thing here um, in, at the moment it's doing 30.7 miles per gallon right let's just get to the got to go through various sort of options Distance, average consumption. Average consumption at the moment 23.7. So I mean that's not brilliant, but then we've only done a few miles, only done 52 miles. Mm. So uh, no, we've done 52 miles. Well, wow. okay, that's what it says. Yeah. So I mean it normally gets better the longer trips you do. I would expect this van to do at least 26, 27, probably closer in the 30s on a, on a long journey, but we'll let you know anyway. Around here. I mean, 
people always worry about the, the width of motorhomes. I mean, most roads like this are not going to cause you a problem, modern roads. No. We'll go about 20 feet over that way and 20 feet over this yeah, way. Yeah, it's both the road. Changed all these roads around here, haven't they? So just got to keep my wits about me here. We're looking for the M65, aren't we? So yeah, I'm going to go up the M65 and across past Blackburn to Bury. Come in the top way, as I put it. No, we're just going to nip into Sainsbury's for some sandwiches because we're both getting a bit hungry. Chance to see what it's like taking a new motor home into, into a Sainsbury's car park. Luckily, they're normally pretty big, aren't they? Yeah. Should have got a diesel here, it's 114.9. That's unleaded. Isn't oh, sorry, it? I'm looking at unleaded, yeah. 125.9. No, that's a. I think it's gone up a little bit. Well, what was it yesterday then? I thought it was 127. Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure I paid about 123, 122.9. Alright, oh, awesome. Good job you got it yesterday then. Yeah. It goes up and down every blooming day, doesn't it? Mm. buzz around you like little busy bees <laughs> so you've got to sort of watch out for them I think because you're moving a little bit slower than they are it's like we're all going in the fuel aren't they? going for fuel aren't they yeah so we normally go right up the other end don't we? yeah what's the thing you've got to watch with a motorhome is going around corners because you've got to watch the back wheel it doesn't go over the kerb and yet you do swing round a lot more and you've got to watch out for cars in the middle of the road as well cars reversing <laughs> doubler up here, can't we? Hopefully. Yeah, we'll have a look. Easy. Double spaces. Always look for double spaces or spaces alongside each other because you're not going to fit in one of the spaces. I don't think so. What about here? He's going, isn't he? Yeah. I've got to watch me back here. The thing with not having a reversing camera is that you can't always be sure what's behind you. There's no reversing sensors either on this. No. And to be honest, it's one of the things I'd fit. Yeah. Either reversing sensors or a camera, preferably a camera. I mean, you can get wireless cameras now that seem to be fairly good. Now I'm just looking down the side there and just Drawing about, the white lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just about fitting the white lines. why I put a cover on the seat. <laughs> Just been fed. 
She always wants to sort of rub her face. So. <laughs> so here we are, living the high life. Yeah. Sandwiches from Sainsbury's in, in a Sainsbury's Leicester car park Islands. in yeah. Preston. Yeah. Bamber Bridge. Bamber Bridge. Sorry, Bamber Bridge. Wanted to see what it was like at motorway speeds. So we're doing indicated 70. But it's fine. It's quite a steep hill coming up, so that will be a bit of a test. You get up into Blackburn. Yeah. It's atrocious weather out there. Very misty. This is the A56 oh, just coming off the motorway. There's a quite a long climb this is. I always fair struggle up here in any vehicle really, but I'm not gonna go mad up here, but I think it's capable of keeping 60 miles an hour going up here quite easily. into Burst Country Park. Those of you who've watched our channel before will know that we've been here many times. And done a few arrival videos, haven't we? Yeah, so there will be a link up here, yeah. which yeah. you can't see me so saying can't up see here. <laughs> oh, doing oh, a bit of road nice. works here. If you insist. Seen better roads. <laughs> Looks like us on a Friday. <laughs> it's the sort of group I go out with when I go cycling. Mm. All about that age. Yep. I could do it doing a bit more of that. in a minute so you probably won't be able to hear a thing I'm saying. No, must be a good test for it wasn't it? Yeah. Good, always a good test for your teeth this is. Obviously something going on here. Awful, isn't it? Maybe you put some nice calming music over. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a car coming there. Yeah, you're just going to carry on coming, isn't it? Go in there, couldn't you? Stop. So we got out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing about having a motor, isn't it? People do get out of your way. <laughs> right. Just going to let them know where we are. 
book the right site. Or 93 or something. Yeah, so how do, we, how do we get around there? We don't go. Don't go up this bit, go up no. the next go bit. Back. And the only one free there is right in front of the toilet block. Or well, there? Yeah. 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 One here or one Yeah, third? this one to do. Yeah, this one here. Alright, so parking. Parking the motorhome. So it's always a test when you're filming this and then trying to do it as well. So make sure you've got enough space behind you to we'll try and take a long run up. And what you've got to watch when you turn is you don't, don't run over the grass as well on the other side. I think I missed it. Now you're looking for the peg in your mirror. Yeah, because you can't look. Well, you can't look. Well, you back can't to look you. in your reversing thing because uh, you I haven't got now it. Now I see the peg and I, fortunately I've judged it just right. Of course you have. I'm going to go back. I know the pitches should be a certain length, but I have got a lamp post behind me. Have you? Do you want me to get out? Post, so just make sure. I don't see Jenny in the mirror, so she's just waving me back. That's it. That's perfect. Water. The idea of a service pitch is that you can hook up the wastewater electric and there's probably an aerial booster as well. Yeah. And a fresh water tap so you can fill up with water. Excellent. What you do, put that on there. Yeah. Get all the kinks out of it. It goes in there. Hi. Down a little bit, that's it. It's easy then. Yep. That's it. People keep saying how low that pipe is. Have they said that? A couple of people have said that. Yeah, we, we had our we had a Bailey compact and it was quite low. And I think I think they're right, I think it is a bit too low. The problem is that you can't get a waste master under there. No, no. Because uh, it's it, it is literally that off the ground. Yeah, yeah. I'd prefer it if it was a flexible pipe, and I think if it was my van, to be honest, I'd put a flexible pipe oh, back on there. Yeah. All right. So the water's coming out. Yeah, it's all right, aren't we? Yeah. Now, as long as it doesn't freeze. We should be all right to connect this hose up. So I'm hoping that this fits there. It does really. Hey, brilliant little thing, that's a yeah. little. My little Hios yeah. connector, because what that allows you to do, put a hose lock yeah. thing in there. Yeah. Put a screwy thing on there, he said. Needs to screw on first. There we go. Oop. Plug that in, switch it on, and then let it fill up. But we still have to monitor it filling up, don't we? Because yeah. that doesn't automatically cut off. No. So, shall I go inside and. Yeah, keep an eye on it. I have to wade through the window or something. Right, they did say to use this fan in the winter. It's a bit mucky now. It's the trouble with white, isn't it? But, uh, 
If they're not dirty, you're not using them. Right, that's it. We're all hooked up on a service pitch. Don't have to do anything else apart from cozy fill it up with water. So the other the other thing we're going to try is hooking up the aerial lead. See if this is wired in. Because not having a manual, we don't really know, do we? No. Um, what's that there? That's a female one. So it's that one. I think. Let me have a look. Looks like a screw on one. Yeah, it's a satellite type uh, aerial connector, I think. Right. I got the. Uh, how, many, how many channels did I say? 70 odd, 70, 70 odd channels. We've plugged it in there. And I've got an aerial cable out there. And that goes into the booster box. Yeah, it goes into the booster box here. Right, that's it for today. Um, Thanks for everyone who's inquiring about my health. I have got a bit of a <laughs> chesty cough well, still. Well, we, so. we picked up a cold, didn't we, around yeah. Christmas time, and yeah. we're struggling to get rid of the rest of it. Yeah, I need some more fresh air, I think that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we're all set up at Burrs. We've plugged in the booster cable. Uh, we've got the electric plugged in. We've got the water waste pipe plugged in. We've filled up with water. We're here for a couple of days. I could be here for longer, I suppose, if we're with all that <laughs> set up. <laughs> And uh, we're, yeah, yeah, that's it. That, that's it. Seems like a long day today. I don't know why. I mean, we've come that far, have we? No, but no. It's it's only just quarter past three. But I suppose yeah. with the the darker nights, it it's feels, foggy here, so it feels yeah. like it's yeah. It feels like it's winter, doesn't it? Yeah, for, for, yeah, yeah, true. It, uh, but we're lovely and warm in here. Yeah, absolutely. It really is nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Boppy's just, eating my hand. And Boppy's eating your hand. Right. <laughs> So, so that's it for now. Remember to give us a, a like, subscribe, hit the notifications icon, and we'll keep you updated as we progress. On our city tour. On our city tour. What are we doing tomorrow? We're having a meal, aren't we? We're tomorrow? having a meal with Glyn tomorrow, yeah. aren't we? In a Scrabble session. So yeah. let's see how, how that goes in here. Yeah. And then we're off to York. Yeah. Following day. All right. Yep. Okay, so we'll see you soon then. Yeah, bye, bye. then. Bye.